with over three terabytes stored in Google Drive, six terabytes of media, eight terabytes of video, plus one Mac Mini, one Mac Studio, two MacBook Airs, and a multitude of iPhones and Android phones, it's got to the stage where I really need to get a handle on my data management. One of the coolest things about this job is when brands that I've admired for like many years ask if I'd be interested in checking out one of their products. Synology have just launched the DS1522 Plus, which retails for around about 685 pounds here in the UK, and it is their 2022 series of NAS drives with five disk bays. This thing might just be the answer to all of my data storage issues. If you are not already aware, NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. And basically it's a bunch of hard drives which are attached directly to your network so you don't need to always like leave a PC on to use it. And whilst I could get away with buying like USB disk after USB disk to try and back everything up, that quickly gets very, very complicated. So a NAS is a way to centralize and like organize everything. So first let's talk about the spec that Synology sent out to me here. So this is the DS1522 Plus, which has five bays, but you can fill with either like traditional hard disks or faster and kind of more expensive SSDs. It's expandable up to 15 bays if you buy the expansion units. And they also sent out the 10 gig ethernet upgrade, which is in addition to the already included four one gig ethernet ports. Now there's also two 400 gig cache drives in here as well. And getting to the main events for what goes inside this box, Synology shipped out five of their four terabyte 7200 rpm sata hard drives like the synology hard drives but it is not just a bunch of hard disks because another benefit of buying a nas is that you can set this thing up so that your data will still survive even if like one of the disks inside fails so these things are absolutely awesome when it comes to storing lots of data whilst minimizing the risk of like losing anything due to a hardware failure now one thing i want to point out here before we continue is that a four terabyte drive doesn't actually show up as a four terabyte drive in the system and to put it simply it's because of the way that like bits and bytes are calculated across various systems now like i said this is the non-techie explanation and if you want the full techie explanation, then ask me in the comments down below and I'll explain all. But that is just to explain why I keep calling them four terabyte drives, even though in the screenshots, you'll see them as only 3.6 terabytes. Okay, so I'm gonna split this video into chapters, which you can see probably down below as we tackle each of the issues that I have and how this NAS can help solve them. Now, those things are gonna be backup, sharing, security, speed of transfer, and of course, like any issues I come across along the way. So let's tackle the backup one first. And like I said, I have an absolute bucket load of data to back up. So once you set the disks up, you can go ahead and start creating folders. Now I've created folders for backup, data, Google Drive, and media. And each of those folders are gonna solve the issues that I mentioned earlier. So let's tackle backup first, because one great thing about the Synology NAS is that you can use this to back up your Macs via Time Machine. Now this is such a simple process because once you create the folder on the Synology, which you do just using this like really straightforward web interface, you just hop over to your Mac, head into the Time Machine preferences, select the disk and just let it do its thing. It's super, super easy. Now for me, this has been an easy way of ensuring everything on you know, all of my Macs has been backed up, which checks off item one on my to-do list of making sure all the various machines around my house are backed up somewhere. Now you can also use the built-in Windows backup tool to back up your Windows PC, or even use third-party tools like Acronis CyberProtect, which we featured recently, to back up to your NAS instead of to the cloud. So that is your Mac and PC backup check. Google Drive is next on my list. And there's a reason why I'm suggesting to have my Google Drive on the NAS, even though I have it already installed on my Mac. Now, firstly, all you need to do is install the Cloud Sync tool on the Synology. And again, you can use the web interface to do this. Just go to Package Center, search for Cloud Sync, and click Install. Then once it's installed, open it up, click on Add, follow the prompts to just connect this to your Google Drive, or as you can see, like a multitude of other cloud storage providers if you use something else. I can then point this at my Google Drive folder that's stored on this NAS, and then tell it to run just like all of the time. So now I have a copy of my Google Drive, stored on the NAS. Now the reason why I have this set up is because when I have like a ton of large video files like this, like I want to upload to Google Drive, I don't want it to interfere with my Mac. So dragging my footage over to the NAS drive skips my Mac entirely and means that I can just get on with like whatever I'm doing whilst I like just let the NAS chug away and upload whatever needs to be uploaded to the Google Drive. Now I can switch my Mac off, I can edit a video, all without worrying about like accidentally cancelling or slowing down the upload that's going on in the background. So that is my Google Drive. Check. 
The next one is media, and there's kind of three parts to this. Part one is just a folder where I can drag all my uh, old raw video footage into, so I don't have to continue paying Google for the cost of this, like, you know, unlimited Google storage. And we'll have some speed tests coming soon for this as well, just to show you. Part two is my Plex media library, where I store, like, my old collection of photos, music, you know, TVs, movies, which I'm sure is a big draw for lots of people who are looking for a suitable NAS drive. Now, I'm not planning on installing and streaming Plex directly off of this NAS drive, as it's better for me to run the Plex application on my M1 Mac, and so I'm just using this NAS like as just a, a lump of storage here. And again, this is pretty straightforward. Create the folder, dump all the media into, like I said, folder, install Plex on my Mac, and then just add that folder to my Plex library, and it's just, that's, that's basically it. It's job done. And then there is part three, and that is to store all of the photos and videos that me and like my family take across all of our, you know, various mobile devices, like iPhone and Android. I mean, if you've got the storage at home, why not use the storage at home instead of shelling out for cloud services like Apple or Google to do the exact same thing? So to do this, you just install the Synology Photos app on your phone on you know either Apple or Android. Then you install Synology Photos on the NAS itself. And again, through that like easy interface, grant a few permissions. And now I can use this NAS to back up all of my photos and videos from like my various phones. So that is all of my backup taken care of. Or is it? Because that's an awful lot of data to have sat on one NAS drive, even though it's able to survive if you know a disk fails, if something pops out like that for whatever reason. Let me introduce you to a term that's used in the backup world called 321. Always have three copies of your data in two different places and at least one of those kept in another location. So it's a pretty simple statement that means that regardless of what happens to you or your data, there will be like a surviving copy somewhere. So using a NAS lets me have three copies of my data. So one locally, one on the NAS, and if I back the NAS up, one in the cloud as well. And same with Google Drive because Google Drive isn't backed up. I can use this to have one copy in Google Drive, one copy in the NAS, one copy backed up to the cloud. So to do this, Synology kindly gave me access to try their C2 cloud backup service, which means that all the data I put onto this NAS also gets backed up to Synology's cloud storage service. And I've said it a few times, but I find the whole like Synology user interface so easy to use, like setting the C2 backup up, backup up, there's too many words there. It's just like, it's just a few clicks. Again, install their hyper backup application, create a new job, tell it what you want it to back up and how often, and just away it goes. It is like so smooth and seamless. And I've used like other NAS units, and this is by far one of the easiest ones to use, even for, for like non-techies. So now I have all of my data backed up to the NAS, and then I have a backup of my backup stored in Synology's cloud. I could take it a ridiculous step further and plug in a USB drive to the back of the Synology, and back up the backup of my backup, but that would probably be quite a bit of overkill. So instead, let's talk about how easy it is to share that data. And we're gonna do the next two steps hand in hand, both kind of sharing and security, because one thing that has been a pain to do in other places is once the data is stored on my NAS to then share that out securely. Now for me, this means giving access to like my whole archive of videos, like the last two and a half years worth of my life to my video editor. So if we need any footage from like any old videos, he can just hop on here, see the whole archive and just grab the footage he needs. And doing this with Technology has been as easy as sharing like something on Google Drive. It is super straightforward. I can share individual files or folders. And in this instance, I can share the entire folder of my archive and then send that to my video editor to access where you can just like grab what he needs when he needs it. Now, this is stuff that's not on Google Drive. It's old archive footage that I assume we don't really need anymore. So I remove it from my Google Drive to save space and then keep it on my NAS instead. Now, this is also secure. Everything's encrypted. And I feel like a bit of a broken record here, but it just works. It's kind of like, dare I say, it's kind of like Apple. Apple, it just works. The benefit of this is that I have a 100 meg upload connection here. So when anyone grabs a file from my NAS, it doesn't actually take them too long to download them because I can send it just as fast as they can probably download it at their end. Now, in terms of security, whilst I've had this NAS, there have been some security updates that have come out. And again, it does a, it does a good job at notifying you and making the install progress super smooth too. So I've, I've no concerns over there whatsoever. Which brings me to, the, to answer the question that I wanted to ask when I was first offered this NAS by Synology. And that is how fast can it actually transfer data? Now, I was really keen when they got in touch for them to send out like the 10 gig adapter in the back, plus making sure I had all of the disk drives populated so I could test like the real world performance of what this thing is capable of. And I also went out and bought the Unify 10 gig ethernet switch here, which gives you four ports of 10 gig because I also recently upgraded to a Mac Studio, which has a 10 gig ethernet adapter, a stand on the back. So just to remind you, I have five four terabyte drives installed in here, configured with Synology's like hybrid RAID, and I won't get too technical, but that's kind of how it's done. Plus I have two 400 gig SSDs installed in the bottom of this, which act as both a read and write cache, which gives me almost 400 gig of SSD cache. And then the cache will just make a difference because when you're actually uploading data 
to the NAS, for example, it will write to the cache first because it's much faster and then write it to the, you know, the, like the slower disks inside. But the combination I have here, like the 10 gig ethernet adapters in the back here, the SSD cache, the five times four terabyte drives should put us in a great position to test the upload speeds. So in my tests, uploading a large video file to the NAS gave me a transfer speed of around about 450 megabytes per second, which is equivalent to 3.6 gigabits per second. So I absolutely smashing like the one gigabit speeds that you would have on like a normal wired connection without upgrading, which absolutely confirms to me that if you plan on transferring like large amounts of data between your devices, particularly onto your NAS, then actually investing in the 10 gig adapter for this NAS, maybe your computer and perhaps a switch in between as well, is well worth it to get like almost four times faster transfer speeds than what is physically possible through just like the, the built-in one gig cards on the back. Though technically, if you're kind of technically minded, you can do some like magic jiggery pokery with combining these network adapters on the back, which also then needs to be supported by the switches you have and it all kind of gets complicated very, very quickly. So for most people, just grab the 10 gig adapter on the back here and then keep it simple. And now this also means that your, you know, your time machine backups will be faster on any wired machines as well. So honestly, if you can stretch to the 10 gig ethernet adapter on the back, then yeah, I highly, highly recommend it. Now in terms of pricing, you can just buy the enclosure. So that's the enclosure. There's no discs, no 10 gig, no SSD cache for around 685 pounds here in the UK, which is a reasonable price. And I'll link down below to a few places where you can buy this, maybe to see if I can find a better price for that anywhere else. Now you can also buy pre-made bundles, which include like the discs in the front here if you want to do that or you can use your own discs but just a word of kind of caution here i would recommend to look at the combat compatibility the combat compatibility page on Synology's website to be sure that the discs are officially supported. And I definitely recommend using supported discs as otherwise like Synology won't provide any technical support for you to run into, you know, if you run into any issues. But you can use readily available discs from the likes of Western Digital and Seagate. And also, though they are expensive in comparison, I feel, Synology themselves have discs that you can purchase and which they've kind of supplied here. And if you can stretch your budget to these, then I do actually quite like them. Like for one, they are far quieter than other drives I've tested, including five of these Seagate 16 terabyte Exos drives, which unfortunately aren't on compatibility list, but are much cheaper. The Synology drives also state they have better consistent performance. They've got integrated firmware updates built into like the Synology DSM software on here, and they have a five year warranty. So whilst they do cost more money, if you have the budget, then I would definitely recommend considering those discs. There are a few other like minor things that I like about this kind of DS1522. It's just the clean, simple, like aesthetically pleasing interface makes it super easy for everyone, regardless of how techy you are. There's a huge repository of apps, which you can install kind of like the app store for your phone, where you can scroll through and find apps to back up your Google Workspace or Microsoft 365, install antivirus to scan things on here. There's a universal sign-on system provided by C2 Identity, which is another Synology product, which works really, really well, but that's more for kind of business uses. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, there are even third party apps from the likes of iDrive and Mega, who I've kind of previously reviewed on this channel, if you want to kind of back up to those services instead, which are probably likely to be more affordable than Synology's own. Which brings me onto the issues that I've had with this Synology. And there aren't, you know, many in all honesty. The NAS itself is well built, beautiful interface, the pricing is pretty good too. So I had to really think hard about these things to bring up in the review. So firstly, I thought that their C2 backup service, their cloud backup service, feels expensive. It's £249 a year for five terabytes of space. But when I looked at Backblaze, probably like my favorite service for backing up to a NAS, or backing up from a NAS, that works out to be $300 per year for five terabytes. So that's basically the same. However, when you reach more than five terabytes, there are some differences. Like services like Backblaze will charge you just $5 per month per one terabyte of data, like up to as many terabytes of data that you need. Synology's C2 backup service only lets you back up five terabytes before you have to switch to their business service, which jumps to 500 pounds per year for five terabytes, plus an extra 10 pounds per terabyte per month. Now, if I was to multiply this out to the storage and backup ca capacity that I need to back up like all of my data, and I, I did the maths, comes to around about 18 and a half terabytes of data. Now, Backblazer service would cost $1,140 per year, whereas Synology service with the C2 kind of cloud backup would cost more than double that at 2,178 pounds, or rather like 2,000 $600. So there is that. But the only other thing I could really like nitpick on for this technology is that at least for this NAS, the list of supported drives is relatively thin. So you may be left struggling to find discs that are maybe in stock or maybe at a reasonable price. And unfortunately, it means that you might have discs lying around the house that you were hoping to use, but you can't officially use. They will work, but you won't get that official support 
from Synology. So thank you once again to Synology for sending this out for me to review. Next up, go and check out the best cloud backup services that you should be using on your computers or check out this one. I'll see you in there. Cheers.